Hello again and welcome to Cowboy Football Weekly, driven by Nissan. Great to have you along. The Cowboys had a tough opener, home opener. They had a uh, tough game against Washington State. We're going to talk a little bit about that. And of course, we'll look ahead to the next one. Big one as the Cowboys head into SEC country to take on Missouri. But uh, Kevin, that uh, was a tough go, I'll tell you, at home, particularly in the second half. Uh, a lot of just, uh, I know the Cowboys, I think the uh, word we heard most after the game was frustrated, uh, disappointed, mm -hmm. all that, I suppose. And to be bluntly honest about it, it was a very disappointing op uh, home opener for the Cowboys. It was. There's no doubt about it because of the expectation level that everybody has, including the team and the coaches. Uh, I, I know everybody to a man believed they could beat Washington State. And really for three quarters, they were in there doing just that. But uh, uncharacteristically, the fourth quarter went Washington State's way. And, of course, Craig Bull and his staff uh, expect their teams to finish well, and the Cowboys did not do that. They uh, had some major penalties. Uh, just uh, things fell apart for them, and they lost a game they think they should have won. Yeah, and, you know, of course, the Cowboys the very first to tip their cap to Washington State. That is a good football team, and they played very, very well. Uh, the Cowboys, though, as you said, Kevin, very uncharacteristically, that defense touched up for four touchdowns, 28 unanswered points in the second half to end the game, which was a very uncharacteristic. But uh, there were some things that went on in this game now that kind of contributed to it. I know the Cowboys had a tough time uh, continuing on without Nico Evans. I know that was, although I thought that Bigelow and, you know, they, and Valade ran very well. Yeah, they did. I think both of them ran well. And I think that's uh, going to be great for them down the road. But uh, absolutely, you, you miss your starting running back if he's out of the game. And when Nico went out, it seemed like it took the air out of the offense. But I'll tell you, you said tip of the hat. I think that's the mm -hmm. very uh, phrase to Mike Leach and what they do. That, that offense, uh, not one sack, not one hurry in the entire game. They did a heck of a job. And a lot of it is the quick hitters and, and, and the way they run their offense. It, the air raid is something to see. And uh, Wyoming uh, was the, the latest victim of it. A lot of teams have, have felt the same. I'll say. Uh, we're going to tip our cap to that Cowboy crowd too, Kevin. Uh, just fantastic. Just under 25,000 in attendance. Uh, it was a gold out and it, it showed it was just fantastic on a beautiful day. So uh, they showed up. It was a, a good crowd, and, and I thought they were very active. Uh, absolutely. They, they were great, and that's why those, the Cowboys love to play here in this stadium. But everything went well but the fourth quarter of the yeah. game. I mean, from start to finish, it would have been a grand day had the Cowboys been able to win that fourth quarter. Yeah, Cowboys now 1-1 one and one after losing to Washington State in that home opener, 41-19. Next up, Missouri, but there's still some thoughts and feelings about that home opener, the Washington State game, and here are some of those thoughts from some of those Wyoming Cowboys. Yeah, you know, a game like that is definitely frustrating. Um, you know, I think we all knew that we had a chance. Um, we were up 16-13 at the half, and then um, the second half, the, the wheels just kind of fell, fell off. You know, it didn't really go our way. Um, we had a lot of missed opportunities, and from my from my perspective, it's really frustrating. You know, you, uh, looking back on the game, um, we had some passes we could have made, some blocks that we could have uh, done, and just the little things. Um, like Coach Bull always preaches about the details. I think if we um, focus on the details in that game, you know, I think we would have had a better shot. Yeah, well, I mean, we're gonna be uh, pretty mad about this one for a couple of days, but come Monday, we got to move on. I mean, you're just you, you have to put this stuff in the rearview mirror, learn from it, um, take what you can from it, and uh, move forward. And and we still got a lot of season left to play. So, so there you see, uh, Kevin. It was a, a kind of a lot of frustration, a lot of disappointment after that uh, loss to Washington State. I guess uh, one thing good about this schedule and about this game. There's another one coming right around the corner, and I think that's probably a good thing for the Cowboys. They do have another one coming up, but they were disappointed by that Washington State. Loss. Oh, absolutely. I, I think this was a golden opportunity. You're mm -hmm. playing a, a P5 program, a, a Pac-12 team that uh, had a good year last year, and, and it was a very good team. But uh, a victory would have been a great feather in the helmet uh, of the Wyoming team because uh, they've had a struggle against P P5 teams and uh, that continued unfortunately on Saturday. Yeah. More to come on Cowboy Football Weekly, driven by Nissan. We'll be back with more right after this timeout. We've all been there, gridlock. But this is the 2018 Nissan Rogue. 
It's got pro pilot assist and can stop and start on its own to help keep your distance from that car ahead and can help keep you centered in your lane. Get a low $199 per month lease or get 0% financing for 60 months on Rogue. Now the most exciting tech you own is in your driveway. If keeping your work site on time, on budget, and onto the next job is keeping you up at night, you need to wake up to Komatsu. Our machines are designed for production, uptime, and savings. We are more than just iron. We are giving you a technology to make more material and less passes. Start sooner, finish faster, and burn less fuel. We are solving problems before you had them. So stop doing what you've always done. The only thing that's going to keep you up at night is wondering why you didn't do it sooner. Discover the job site of your future. Komatsu. When did we stop thinking up new questions and daring to chase down their answers? The world needs more wonder, more outside thinkers hungry for a challenge. The world needs more cowboys. And it's not what you are that makes you a cowboy or a cowgirl, but who you are. It's a shared spirit, the kind that emboldens those who possess it to stand on the perimeter and howl into the unknown with unbendable optimism. The world needs more cowboys. Well, next up for the Wyoming Cowboys, they will travel to SEC country. Yeah, now it's SEC country, Columbia, Missouri, as they take on the Missouri Tigers. First ever meeting between these two schools. I think that's kind of surprising. Cowboys have been playing football for 122 years and <laughs> have never played Missouri. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's interesting. And here's another team, Kevin, that can score points. They scored 51 in their opener against UT Martin. Well, one of the most prolific offenses in the country. Drew Locke is uh, considered one of the top draft choices in the country at quarterback. In fact, he turned down the draft to come back for his senior year, so got to give him a little bit of credit for that. But uh, he's a great one. He throws well. He's got uh, a stable of receivers. Got a heck of a running back in Crockett. So they, they've got a lot of offensive weapons. A lot of weapons on that offensive side of the football. A lot of athletes on the defensive side. The Missouri Tigers next up. And head coach Craig Bowl had a little bit to say about last week and the upcoming opponent, Missouri. Obviously, we spent a great deal of time uh, looking at uh, where we were at in the rearview mirror. But now we got to look forward to uh, playing an excellent Missouri team. Um, you know, I think Coach Odom has done an outstanding job leading and uh, moving that football program forward. They took big steps this last year. Uh, they're prolific on offense. They led the SEC in, uh, in total offense. They have 10 starters coming back. You've got a, uh, you know, a, a highlighted quarterback who I think is an excellent player, a big, strong defensive lineman, and uh, those guys know what they're doing on defense and they play really hard. And when you're playing against an SEC team, typically that's going to give you an indication that the talent level is such that their special teams are going to be very effective. So uh, that being said, you know, we've got a big challenge, but we're going to move forward as a football team. I think we've got good players too, and we got to play better. we got to coach them better. And so that's kind of the task at hand. Well, the Cowboys will face a prolific offense when they're on the defensive side of the football, looking at that Missouri Tiger offense. And as you said, uh, plenty of weapons here. Uh, the quarterback, Locke, will probably be their all-time leading passer by the time he's done. He's only he's second all-time, only to chase Daniel, uh, the effective running game. And boy, they've got a receiver that is something else. Again, 6'3", 195-pounder that can go get the football. So plenty of weapons there, Kevin, on offense. Well, the guy, there are. The, mm -hmm. the guy threw 44 touchdown passes yeah. last year. I mean, that's uh, incredible when you think about it. I, I'm most impressed with their offensive line. Uh, they've got a, a group that uh, led the country in not having negative plays, and uh, that, that's a pretty good deal. They're huge. Uh, not one guy under 6'4", not one guy under 315 pounds. Cowboys had trouble with the Washington State offensive line last week. They'll have to do some different things this week to try to beat those guys. Yeah, Drew Locke has com been compared to Josh Allen size-wise. He's 6'4", 225, the quarterback for Missouri. So a lot to see from that uh, Missouri offense. And Cowboy defenders Garrett Crawl and Logan Wilson talked a little bit about the upcoming opponent, the Missouri Tigers. From what I've seen, you know, they're they're fast. Uh, they have athletes, you know, they can spread it out. Uh, they have a good quarterback, good old line. Um, so it's going to be a challenge for us, but it's nothing too daunting. Uh, when you have the players on defense like we have, we can match up with anybody in the country. Uh, it's just a matter of us 
keep continuing to get better. And I think if we do that, we'll be able to go out there and execute the game plan that Coach Hayes and the staff gives us, and we'll be just fine. I mean, obviously they have a really good quarterback in Drew Locke, and uh, there's been some comparisons too with him and you know the guy we used to have here a year ago. So um, we'll have our hands full this week, and so we'll get to uh, looking at that film and you know dissecting a little bit, and then you know we really just gotta come out on Saturday and you know worry about us and execute the best that we can. Well, the Cowboys will have some uh, challenges on the other side of the football too when Wyoming. Uh, is playing defense. They'll look at that offense, that Missouri uh, offense we just talked about. But what about when the Cowboys have the football? What will they be seeing on the other side that Missouri defense kept? Well, they're going to see a very active uh, defense, obviously, Dave. But uh, the, the strength of their defense is linebackers, much like when they went to Iowa a year ago. That's where uh, all the uh, strength was for the Iowa team last year. So uh, it, it's going to be a stout defense. Uh, you don't hear much about them because of the offense, but they're pretty good, and those linebackers are very good. Yeah, it's a first-ever meeting, Wyoming and Missouri, Saturday, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. No? No. 5 p.m. <laughs> Mountain Time, the kickoff, 6 p.m. Central Time in Columbia, the Cowboys and the Tigers this Saturday night. Come back next time, and we'll take a look at some of the highlights, and we'll talk more about the Missouri game and look ahead on the next Cowboy Football Weekly, driven by Nissan. For Kevin McKinney, I'm Dave Walsh. So long, everybody.